going to the 2014 World Championship. We played TSM today. We played against them the last two playoffs, and we won. Hopefully that stays a tradition. Our match against TSM means a lot. It means the first seed. Getting high seed as possible is what you need to do to win. We have won every game in playoffs so far, which is nice. What a series TSM wins! We need to show where we're at in NA. For us to be the best, we need to beat everyone. I went to watch Worlds last time. I just sat there wanting to be on the stage and not actually have the chance. I think everyone can expect some crazy games. Final day of the 2014 North American LCS. It's Championship Monday, and we have got an exciting day ahead of us as the top two teams battle it out in front of a packed PAX house in Seattle, Washington. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, and joining me once again to break down the league action is Aiden Zyrene Moon and Evil Geniuses Poe Belter. Poe Belter, you've had an opportunity to see both Cloud9 and TSM in action this week, so I'm going to put you in the hot seat yet again. Who do you think is going to take the finals? Well, on Friday, I said that either TSM or Curse would probably be taking it. But after watching the matches that have happened already in the playoffs, I think that C9 is going to take it 3-1, and one, or 3-0, and oh, actually. Uh, one of the two. Which one? Hot seat. 3-1. and one. Okay. Oh. Because C9 just looked like so <laughs> dominant in all of their matches. But we saw that uh, Curse gave LMQ a lot of trouble, which gave TSM a lot of trouble. So it might be that those three teams are a lot closer to each other, and C9 is just a step ahead. Is that right? I'm going to go 3-0, Cloud9. 3-0 the dream on that one. All right, so a lot of support here for, for Cloud9. Well, moments ago, we did get a glimpse of the teams putting on their game faces. We got High and the rest of the team gearing up. These guys, they've got to feel confident having everything under their belts in the previous seasons. And then, of course, Loco Doco giving a pep talk to his team. A lot of their success in the latter part of the season has been attributed to the fact that he was brought in as a coach. Yeah, when we had him on the desk, he talked about a very personal style. So I'm not surprised to see him giving him a pep talk right before the game, boosting their morale. Exactly. Well, you guys at home have been Johnny on the spot over on Twitter, calling out all the unforgettable LCS big plays, and there were plenty to choose from yesterday. So, for our first one, it comes from Game 2 between Curse and LMQ. At Darth OB tweets, Oh my god, Game 2, first Baron, just watch how Voiboy Boy stays alive, clutch positioning, and Thresh Lantern. Yasu, no you don't. Let's take a look at your number three. Special survives the death mark, and that is Baron picked up by I Will Dominate. The battle continues. Can this be the damage for Curse? Hook onto No Name. He's gonna go down. Shao Wei Shao dropped as well. Two for zero. Three for zero. Whoa! For Curse. Yasu, oh no, you don't. I gotta have a talk with Freak about tweeting in on his smurf. <laughs> then from game five, Voiboy gets first blood. At Penta X Goon says, the plays, the teleport for Qua saving Voiboy, and the kill on Xiao Wei Xiao. Here's your number two. Wow, will Xiao Wei Xiao get a knockup and a combo out? The pink board comes in. There's the combo. They go for Voiboy. Binding its no name that was especially going to be enough for this one. Oh, There's first the blood. Voi gets first blood in game five. The roaming Akali will be a danger for LMQ and a huge point of power for Curse. So the key player in that play was a special roaming just like straight down the lane and he landed a perfect bind on No Name who was playing Kha'Zix right when he jumped in and so they were just able to pick him off. He tried to go in for the end for like a flash assassinate in the end but Quaz was just ready. It was a great first blood. Unfortunately, they didn't take the game off of that. But finally, from game four, at League of Tanks writes, the shockwave engage from Xiao Wei Zhao has to be an LCS big play. As a matter of fact, it's your number one. Let's roll it. There's a lot of poke here from uh, LMQ as well. Shockwave, shockwave is on three. There's the engage. In comes no name. Help bar so low. Quas dies. All will dominate. First one away. Woo! Xiao Wei Xiao back on Orion. A huge shockwave to end out the game. Yeah. 
That's the Shaoi Shao is waiting to see that entire series. That's a flashback, pretty much replete, repeat play of Challenger when they had a Jarvan combined with Orianna. And it's always the best feeling, though, when you get that shockwave without assistance from someone else. That was just his own repositioning of the ball there. So be on the hunt for more of those epic, game-changing moments today and share them with us at Lull Esports and use the hashtag LCSBigPlays. And with LMQ punching their ticket to Worlds, let's review who they joined. Cloud9 and TSM are the other NALCS representatives, whereas in Europe, European LCS, it's Alliance, Fnatic, and SK Gaming. From GPL, it's the Taipei Assassins and AHQ. And taking the international wildcard spots are Turkey's Dark Passage and Brazil's Kaboom Esports. From Korea, it's Samsung Blue, Samsung White, and Najin White Shield. Finally, from China, where there are till still two seats for grabs, it's Edward Gaming. And be sure to mark your calendars for the World's Reveals show. We'll break down the 16 teams taking to the international stage to compete for the Summoner's Cup, as well as unveil the four groups the teams will be divided into. Tune in Monday, September 8th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Central European time for all the info you'll need to navigate the road to Worlds. Now we want to take a moment and... Uh, Acknowledge a few winners, if you will. We're happy to announce our NA LCS regular season awards, starting with our leader for the most assists, Moore. Moore flew under the radar compared to some of the other players on LMQ, but he came up big in his first split in the NA LCS, snagging 272 assists in the regular season. Now, week after week, he turned in solid performances, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the most feared bot lane duos in the league. And we have to point out 12 of LMQ's 18 wins came on Moore's impressive Thresh and Braum games. Now next, the award for most kills goes to Moore's partner in the bot lane, Vasily. In a pool of strong 80 carries this season, Vasily stood above the rest, bagging 140 kills. And just for style points, he was one of only three players to get a Penta kill in the regular season and went undefeated on Tristana with an impressive six games on the Meglin Gunner. But Vasily proved he's a team player and also got the most assists for an 80 carry with 144. And then finally, our next winner is running off with a double buffed honors. Taking the award for Rookie of the Split and MVP is LMQ's Xiaowei Zhao. On a, player, on a team of power players, Xiaowei Zhao really set himself apart. He was a consistent playmaker and dominated opponents in the mid lane, getting the most kills for his position with 114. Throughout the split, Xiaowei Zhao managed to claim our weekly MVP honor three times and was our OP mid laner in five of 11 weeks. And that's a pretty insane statistic right there. Oh yeah, these, a lot of these are stat-based, most killed, most assists. And uh, Xiaowei Zhao, he actually got the mid lane MVP more than anybody else and weekly MVP more than anybody else. All right, well, let's send it over to Kobe, who's standing by with the regular season winners. Thank you, Dash. Now... First of all, I want to congratulate all of you, and we have a couple questions for Xiaowei Xiao. Now, you guys came over, you worked your way through the Challenger series, you played in the LCS, and now you're cramming the most valuable player of the regular season. How does it feel to receive such a high honor? Uh, I'm really happy to receive these awards. Uh, for me personally, it's uh, a sign for me that my career is progressing and in the North American uh, LCS. As well, I want to show people in the future that I'm going to improve even more. All right. Well, thank you, Xiao Xiao. I want to follow that up and ask you, how has it been to play this split in the North American LCS and get to know the players of all the other teams? I think all the players in NALCS are extremely talented. In our games with every single one of them, in our scrims, I realize that their individual talent is superb. I think what distinguishes us from the rest of the teams is that the team coordination may not be right, may not be there yet. 
and that's what allowed us to come out and attend the Worlds. All right. Well, you've developed a very big fan following. Is there anything that you would like to say to the crowd? I want to thank all the fans. I think the fans in North America are extremely passionate. When we're just walking down the streets, we get recognized, and it just makes me extremely happy. I love all my fans, and thank you guys so much. All right. Well, congratulations once again to all of you guys. And now we are going to send it back to the guys at the analyst desk. Thank you, Kobe. Now we're going to head over to Twitter and let you do the talking. Today we're asking, what has been your favorite moment from this week? So give it some thought, then send your answers to at Esports and use the hashtag LCS. We'll be giving shout outs to a few of our favorites later on in the show. We're going to take a quick break, though, but do not click away. When we return, we'll be kicking off the 2014 North American Summer Championship Finals. Stay tuned.